Here in Switzerland, we talk about a January hole, which is created by the many expenses around Christmas and end of the year. This is why this episode is about a cheap module. Uninterruptible power sources or UPSs for our Raspberry Pi, Arduino or ESP microcontroller usually are quite expensive and also do not always work. When I found these small $2 modules, I asked myself, can we use them as a UPS or are they just junk and false promises? Time for a closer look. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. From time to time, viewers ask how they should power their projects, especially with batteries. Today, we will take a look at this small module and find out if it is any good, how it compares with power banks and where it fits in the energy supply chain. Let's start with a short overview. How do we power our projects? Generally, we either use mains or sun as a principal power, and sometimes we use a battery. Most of our MCUs and sensors either run on 3.3 or 5 volts, or sometimes both. What are the choices in between? To get 5 volts from mains, we usually either use a USB charger or a power supply like this one. Solar cells need a specialized solar charger, which usually directly charges a battery. Our Arduinos and Raspberries run on 5V and our ESPs are rated from 3 to 3.6V. Some sensors even need exactly 3.3V for proper operation. So let's start with 5V. The chargers deliver already 5V and if we do not need a battery, we are done. If we need constant 3.3V, we need a low dropout voltage regulator, also called LDO, to create a stable voltage. Our development boards usually have an LDO right on board if they run on 3.3 volts and accept 5 volt USB power. If not, we have to add one. Everything okay for many projects. If we want to be independent of mains, at least for a particular time, or because the sun does not always shine, we often use LiPo or Li-Ion batteries to bridge the time without power supply. Because they behave similarly, I will call them LiPo in this video. As we all know, these LiPo batteries have to be handled with care. They need a charger with an elaborated charging curve and protection against undervoltage. Their voltage varies from 4.2 volts fully charged to around 2.6 volts where the protector cuts it off. Nominal is 3.7 volts, which I use here. Let's start with a simple case and assume we use a 3.3 volt MCU. Then we can connect the battery directly to the LDO and we are done. If we need 5 volts from the battery, however, we need a boost converter. We find many packages integrating these four parts. They are called power banks. Unfortunately, most of them cannot be charged and discharged at the same time. We will later learn why this is the case. This is no problem for scenarios where we charge the battery and then use it to power our project. For uninterruptible power supplies or solar scenarios, this is not the case. The cell has to be charged and discharged at the same time. So many of us search for such a device. What is on this small board for $2.14? It contains a battery holder, a LiPo charger, three LDOs, an undervoltage protection, and a boost converter. Very similar to a power bank. So let's check it out. If we start on the 5V side, we find the well-known TP4056 LiPo charger. It runs up to 8V input voltage and in video number 155 we found out that we even can connect a small 6V solar panel directly to this chip. It does most of the stuff to keep a LiPo battery happy. The next chips are LM6206. These are small 3.3V LDOs. They do not need a lot of current for their operation, only around 10 microampere each. The boost converter is an FP6298, together with a diode, an inductor and a few other parts. Under voltage protection is done with a standard combination of a DW01 and an 8205A MOSFET. 
The same chips are used in protected LiPo batteries as we saw in video number 160. Let's now do some measurements to check if our theoretical assumptions are correct. First, we measure the current used by the module without any load. It is 330 microampere at 4.2 volts. Without boost converter, it only consumes around 77 microampere. The battery is charged with around 600 milliampere. At 4.2 volts, it stops charging everything as expected. To protect the cell, the chip should only charge with a small current if its voltage is below 3 volts. I do not test this now because we will dig into this topic later on. The 3.3 volt regulators at room temperature of around 22 degrees easily deliver 400 milliampere, much more than calculated or even rated. Each of them easily can drive an ESP8266 or an ESP32, even with some additional sensors. And we do not have one of them, we have three of them, which we can run in parallel, resulting in more than one ampere, as specified. Does it also deliver 4 ampere on 5 volts? No, not at all. At 1.7 ampere it shuts the rail down and you have to remove the battery to switch it back on. However, it is still enough for our Raspberry Pi as an example. Now we come to the small stuff. This switch only switches the power of the USB connector. All other 5V connections stay alive as well as the boost converter. It would have been much better to switch the enable pin of the FP6298. I tried to bend the enable pin to get access but killed the chip. Maybe you succeed in bending the leg a little and disconnect it from the PCB. Like that, you can disable the whole boost converter and save nearly 300 microampere if you do not need a 5 volt rail. The LEDs work as expected. Green means battery full and red means charging. But what happens if we charge and discharge the battery at the same time? The current flows from the charger via the TP4056 to the positive pole of the cell. This current is 600 milliampere on this board. Because the boost converter, as well as the LDOs, are connected to the same pin, the current is split according to the voltage of the battery. If the battery voltage is below 4.2 volts and the load consumes less than 600 milliampere, the battery is charged till it reaches 4.2 volts. Then the battery needs no charging anymore and the TP4056 reduces its current to match the load. If the charging current is smaller than the load, the battery is discharged and at around 2.6 volts battery voltage, the protector will cut the load off. A good example here is if the mains power is down. By the way, the protector does not cut the positive line. It cuts the negative path to the load and switches it off. If the TP4056 gets power again, it starts to deliver current. The voltage increases and the protector switches the load on. We are back to charging. Unfortunately, this is not the full truth. To protect the battery, the TP4056 reduces the charging current below 3 volts to about one tenth of the standard charging current. This current is called trickle current and is around 60 milliampere. This always happens if the power outage is very long. If the load consumes more than 60 milliampere, the battery will never be charged again. Our otherwise excellent module became utterly useless. Only if you disconnect the load for a few minutes and charge the battery till it reaches more than 3 volts, it will recover and the charging current goes up to 600 milliampere. Now you can connect your load again. I assume this is the reason manufacturers of power banks do not allow charging and discharging at the same time. If the power bank is completely discharged, it will never charge again and would be considered defective as long as the user does not remove the load. What can be done? First, we can replace R2 to increase the charging current. Then also trickle current is increased. I changed R2 to 1.2 kilo and got a trickle current of around 100 milliampere. If you use an ESP or an Arduino, this should be sufficient. 
the Raspberry consumes at least 300 mA and will not recover. For that case, we need an additional protection which shuts the RPI down at a battery voltage of 3 volts. It also must not start it before the battery voltage is higher than 3 volts. But this is a topic for another video. If we assume an average consumption of the RPI of 400 mA and a battery capacity of 2400 mAh, this device can protect power outages of up to 6 hours without manual intervention. In reality, it is probably longer. Afterwards, you have to manually disconnect your Raspberry, wait for a few minutes till the voltage is above 3 volts and reconnect it again. As said before, this is only for the Raspberry Pi. Arduinos and ESPs should restart automatically. Summarized, this cheap module has most we need to power our devices. Be it an Arduino of any kind, an ESP8266, an ESP32 or a Raspberry Pi. It can interact as an independent power source for 3.3 or 5 volt devices. We even can power the MCU on 3.3 volt and the motor or LEDs on 5 volt. It treats the LiPo battery well and has all needed protection circuits. Because it can charge and power at the same time, it also can act as an uninterrupted power supply for Arduinos, ESPs or even the Raspberries. The TP4056 on the standard board delivers 600 mA if the battery voltage is above 3 volts and only 60 mA if it is below 3 volts. The board will automatically recover after an outage if this current is higher than the load. You have to disconnect the load if it is bigger than the 60 mA. If we change R2 to 1.2 kilo ohms, the respective currents are 1000 mA and 100 mA. We can connect it to a wall charger as well as a 6 volt solar panel. The only thing we cannot do is to connect it directly to a 12 volt solar battery. If we want to do that, we have to use a converter from 12 to 5 volts. It delivers the specified 1 ampere at 3.3 volts. However, only 1.7 ampere at 5 volts, not the 4 amperes as specified. And we have to pay attention. Even if we can use 2.5 ampere in total, this is not possible in the long run. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.